Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. So we are going to continue with the Cauchy-Riemann equation and the problems related to Cauchy-Riemann equation. So we already learned how to tackle problems related to Cauchy-Riemann equation. So today let's try a few different questions with Cauchy-Riemann equation. So please write the first one. Prove that the following function is analytic. So I am going to keep an exponential function here. And like I told you in the last videos, we are not talking about real valued functions. We are talking about complex valued function means the input will be a complex number and we call it the set plane and the output will be another complex number that will be usually called the W plane and the input is x plus iy and the output will be u plus iv. So what I am going to do is I am going to call the output as u plus iv and the input as x plus iy and I will simplify. We will get u plus iv equal to e power x multiplied by e power iy. But I hope you remember e to the power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta. If you don't know these things, I will strongly recommend watch the first video in complex analysis in which we learn the revision required to learn complex analysis. So u plus iv will be reduced to e power x multiplied by cos y plus i sin y. That is u plus iv is equal to, just open the bracket, distribute that e power x. We get e power x into cos y plus i multiplied by e power x into sin y. So the value of u will be equal to e power x cos y and v is equal to e power x multiplied by sin y. Now pause the video and tell me what is the Cauchy-Riemann equation. Come on, come on, come on, try it. I hope you still remember. So we find all the partial derivative. What do you mean by ux? You have to differentiate u by keeping x as a variable. That means y will be a constant. x as the only variable. So the constant will remain as such and the derivative of e power x is e power x. Then comes u, y. That means I am going to treat y as a variable. Now, x is a constant. What is the derivative of cos y? Yeah, it is minus sin y. If you want, you can write this as minus e power x multiplied by sin y. Now, vx will be, vx means you are going to differentiate v with respect to x. Same thing. And by of course will be e power x cos y. Now question number one. Are all the partial derivatives continuous? Do you remember? I told you. CR equation is not enough to prove that a function is analytic. Are all the partial derivatives continuous? Yes. Exponential functions and cos and sine functions. That's it. They are continuous. But you have to write that in your exam. Question number 2. Is ux is equal to vy? Let me check. ux, vy. Yeah, they are same. What about uy equal to? Is it like oh, yeah, negative of each other? uy equal to minus vx. So, CR equations are balanced and the partial derivatives are continuous. Hence, the given function that is e power z is analytic. Now look at this, the function is e power z. So I know that the derivative will be e power z. But it is not because you know the derivative of real valued functions, but somehow, somehow they are both the same. Anyway, there is a method to find the derivative that's called Mill-Thomson method. You will understand when we reach around lesson 9, lesson 8, etc. This is going to be extra, extra important. That's why I am training you with that method. So, if you want to find the derivative in terms of Z with the help of Mill-Thomson method, 
what we do is we write the result we got from the derivation of CR equation ux plus ivx. So look at this, I got the derivative but it is not in terms of z. What is ux e power x cos y plus i, what is vx e power x sin y. Now apply the trick. You replace our x with z and y with 0. What is cos 0? 1 plus i multiplied by e power z multiplied by 0. So we end up with e power z. Okay, now let's go for another question. So question number 2. Now if you feel confident, uh, I will strongly recommend that um, you pause the video and try it yourself. Anyway, at the end of the video, I will give you 2-3 questions to practice. Practice and comment. By the way, if you like the videos, do support us. Okay, now the next question is super important f of z equal to sine hyperbolic z. In the last video we did trigonometric function sine z but here you are having sine hyperbolic z, shine z. I told you in the last video itself the proper way to pronounce this is shine, kosh, than koshik can see. They are called the drunken mathematicians trigonometric functions. Anyway, what I do is I am going to write the connection between the trigonometric function and the hyperbolic function. So it goes like sin i z is equal to i shine z. And I am going to read this from right to left. Read this from right to left. So we get i shine z equal to sin i z. So I want the value of shine z that will be 1 by i sin i z. Pause the video, think about it for a minute. Now I am going to write as usual u plus iv equal to, now I am going to replace this with 1 by i sin i because we already found the value and the input is x plus iy. I hope you watch the revision. In the revision I told you 1 by i is minus i. It is something from the basic complex numbers that you are supposed to know. And then we have sine. I am going to distribute this i. ix plus i squared y. So u plus iv equal to minus i sine ix minus y. What is i squared? Minus 1. You should be aware of 1 by i and i square. So u plus iv equal to quick quick uh, minus i into what is sin a minus b? Sin a. If you are feeling confident, pause the video, try it yourself, then confirm the answer. So sin a cos b minus cos a sin b. So u plus iv equal to minus i. What is sin ix? i sin hyperbolic x. What is cos ix? That is cosh x. We talked about it in the last video. So those who are watching the video continuously will not have much trouble. Now distribute this iv. What is i squared? i squared is minus 1. So what happens if I multiply i squared by minus, you will get 1. So we get shine x cos y minus minus will be plus i cos x sin y. And I hope I don't have to help you with the remaining part. So you will get u equal to this and v equal to this. And let me put a small warning here. The derivative of the trigonometric function sine is cos. The derivative of the trigonometric function cos is minus sine. But in the case of hyperbolic functions, the derivative of sine hyperbolic x is cos hyperbolic x. The derivative of cos hyperbolic x 
is sine hyperbolic x. So, don't get it confused. Shine becomes cosh and cosh becomes shine. So, try the remaining part yourself and comment below the derivative of sine hyperbolic cell. And once more, I can write the answer directly. But I am teaching you one method that is called the Mill Thompson method so that at a later point you will understand it is going to be very, very, very important. So, learn to find the derivative with Mill Thompson method. Now, let us go for the next question that is question number 3. Okay. Prove that the function f of z equal to 1 by z, z not equal to 0 is analytic. So, what should I do? u plus i v equal to 1 by x plus i y. Oh no, this is going to be complicated. So, in the next video, in the next video we are going to learn about polar form of CR equation. You do not need the derivation. If you are interested, you can search the derivation. But anyway, if you are doing engineering or applied mathematics, you do not need the derivation. You need the statement only. Anyway, let us try it with this long method so that in the next video you can enjoy the polar version of the CR equation. So, u plus i v equal to what should I do? I have to multiply by conjugate. If you are not able to understand this step, pause the video, watch the revision. And the next step is again from your basics. What is x plus i y times x minus i y? x square plus y square. I am not going to explain this because you must pause the video and watch the revision. So, x minus i y. So, u plus i v equal to x by x square plus y square minus i y by x square plus y square. Let me explain that. A minus b by c will be a by c minus b divided by c. So, u equal to x by x square plus y square, v equal to minus y by x square plus y square. Anyway, I am not leaving you right now because the derivatives will be a little bit difficult. Uh, you can use any method you like, but I want you to apply the quotient rule. So, you have u by v. Um, so, I am going to write the denominator squared. Do you remember quotient rule? Denominator multiplied by, do not forget we are doing partial differentiation. x is the hero, x is the variable minus uh, derivative of denominator will be 2x plus 0 and ux turns out to be x square minus 2. So, you will get a y square minus x square by x square plus y square the whole square. I will strongly recommend you to try the derivatives by yourself. I will do v x equal to, to be honest to find v x you do not need u by v rule, but I have seen many students being comfortable with u by v rule. So, for such students I will give company, I will do this part with u by v rule. So, we have a numerator, the denominator. So, I am going to write the denominator square so that I do not forget later. Now, denominator multiplied by, wait a minute, who is the hero? x. Oh, the derivative will vanish. Minus numerator, I am taking minus y as the numerator. Multiplied by, the derivative of denominator will be 2x. So, eventually I will get plus 2xy by x square plus y square the whole square and then you can try the remaining part by yourself. So, you prove that ux equal to vy, uy equal to minus vx that is not enough. It also tell that the partial derivatives are continuous and since in the question they have given z not equal to 0, the modulus of z will also be not equal to 0. And I hope you remember the formula for modulus root under x square plus y square. And since this is not equal to 0, this derivative cannot vanish. 
or the derivative will not break so they are continuous functions so i'll be back very soon with another video so till then my friends bye